Hi, Leanne Donahue Tamplin here. Today I interviewed Sharon Donahue Tamplin, my sister, and she's a high school teacher and she's going to talk about her um, the adversities she's overcome, one, one in particular, and how she got through it, the toughest thing she got through in her life. And I wanted to let you know, just a, a bit of a heads up, that uh, she and I sound a lot alike, so you might need to be looking at the screen so you know who is speaking at what time. Uh, I have heard that from other people before. And also a number of her pets were around her at uh, throughout the interview and at times they wanted to be heard as well. So, you know, I hope you're okay to listen to the animals talking as much as my sister. And uh, thanks, and I'll give you some more information back here again soon. Now, I'm going to ask you some uh, more kind of specific questions. Yes. So what strategies, so given you're going through this nine-month period at that high level of stress, one of the strategies you, you used was we've already identified you went and got some medication. Yes. Um, you reached out when you really needed it and spoke yes. to some people. Yes. Is there anything else you did? Did you do anything like visualising it, or like the, the success at the end or, you know, oh, no. affirmations no. or self-talk or regular exercise? Okay. I could not visualise success at the end. Yeah. Um, however, I suppose, you know what, now I'm going to take that back because there was an ad on TV that regularly used to come up that said, um, Queensland, beautiful one day, perfect the next. Yep. Uh, so every time that ad came on, the kids and I would say, beautiful Queensland, beautiful one day, perfect the next, that'll be us soon. <laughs> That'd be the only, and we'd kind of go, oh, we'll wait and see kind of thing, you know, yeah. um, because it was, you did not know what was happening with your life for mm. nine months. You, you lived in a yeah. not knowing what tomorrow will bring kind of thing. You know? so, so were you doing anything at the time like absolutely. exercising yeah. every day? Oh, or Absolutely. Exercising yeah. on a regular basis. Lost a yeah. whole heap of weight, so looked great <laughs> in, my, um, in my leotards. And yeah. <laughs> The girls at the gym said I looked like the um, the body pump ad girl <laughs> like this, you know. So yeah, I exercised whenever the, the the kids weren't with me. I was exercising, even when the kids were with me. They became so familiar with the gym, and the gym that I was at was actually a squash center. So it was this tiny little thing, and the people who owned the gym encouraged me to go and do my cert three in fitness and offered got me gave me work as a because i was a regular mm -hmm. gave me work as an instructor yep. and so they'd i'd bring the dinner for the kids and they'd sit downstairs and they'd watch tv because there was a tv set on and they the, the owners had children of their own <laughs> and they'd like babysit them for me Wow. Um, and then it would do, and so it was that it was helpful for them because they got an instructor. It was great for me because I got to exercise and the kids would be there. However, that only happened like once a week, but yep. you know, it was it was part of our routine. Yep. Um, and then on a Saturday, I'd go again, and the the kids would come, and that's where we made our pickup point at the gym, so that we weren't at each other's house. Yeah. Um, um, and it was One of the you things were that was really important for me was a nighttime routine because I couldn't sleep, of course, yeah. and I couldn't stop my head. Yeah. And I had a lot of trouble with that. So I learned the wonder of uh, lavender oil <laughs> on the pillow. Yeah. Uh, and the kids even used to get a dob of lavender oil. The kids all, we all slept together. The three of us slept in two beds pushed together. The three of us would all sleep together. Um, so I couldn't, I suppose I couldn't let them out of, I couldn't let them sleep down the hallway anymore because I was scared I was going to lose them. Yeah. Um, I would make, I had a routine, you know, have a shower. Uh, we'd watch TV to, to the kids and I all had the same routine. So we'd watch TV till late 30. Um, I would jump in the shower. They'd get themselves into, they'd already have had their showers. Um, we'd get into bed, we'd read, mm -hmm. we'd put on music so that there was a distraction for my brain yeah. um, and we'd all go to sleep together. So you, I had other people sleeping with me. So I've got that, Yeah. I, I don't what is that, that alpha waves or whatever the waves are yeah. um, in the air. I've got the burner working. I've got lavender. I've got um, sometimes I would have a natural herb mm -hmm. sleep at night. 
um, but sleeping was the biggest problem. And my throat would get so tight. My I would put a rub on here to because I grew like this all the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like it like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that, the sleeping was the biggest problem for me because with two little kids, if you're tired, it's a disaster. Yeah. So, um, and so I, like managing the day-to-day -day life required being able to get some sleep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we yeah. just, all I was thinking was take one day at a time, one day at a time. And every day brought with it something new, mm -hmm. a phone call from the solicitor. Or law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A phone call from a father-in-law, you know, that was every day brought some uh, some new hurdle to overcome, and um, you do it, and then when you got to get to when you got to bed, it was done. You, now I wanna I well, wanna ask you as well. Go another one. I gotta I gotta keep moving us along. I don't want to go too long. Yeah, sorry. The, no, that's you're doing great. It's fantastic. Um, I also want to ask you about character strengths. So what of your own character, now I'm going to give you some examples so you've, you've got something, you know, to work on, but what were the particular character strengths do you think that you called on that you used or that helped you the most, right? So I'll yep. give you some examples, things like creativity, perseverance, um, teamwork, self-discipline, connections to others, a sense of humour, Things yep. like that. There can be a whole lot of others, but things like that. What do you think? Resilience. Number know. one is resilience. Yeah, right. Um, so, so what do you mean by resilience? That you're able to just bounce back? Kicked down. And and um, you, I live by a philosophy that was probably developed then, that I give myself a day to wallow in it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You, you, are, you get a day. And you get a day to feel sorry for yourself and wallow in it. And you've got to give yourself that day. But all you get is that day because life goes on. Yeah. And you've got to get back up and dust yourself off and go again mm -hmm. because there isn't anyone else who's going to do it for you. Yeah. Um, you're it. You're, you're it. You're, you're the most important person in their future. Mm -hmm. And you have to stand your ground. Mm -hmm. Whether you you have to become a better you, a stronger you, and that's what you've got to do. Give yourself the twenty four hours. Yep. Things would happen though. I'd be feeling sorry for myself, and you know how do I get here? You know that kind of thing. Um, and you'd stop at a um, intersection and a pedestrian. And a person in a wheelchair would go across that and you'd think, you selfish. <laughs> <laughs> it could be so much worse. Yeah. Get yeah. back up. Do yeah. it again. You yeah. got it. You're alive. You're kicking. Do it. What's yeah. you? Yeah. Just you giving in. Don't give in. So yeah. resilience, I think, is... Yeah, but I, I actually think I think the resilience is about keep getting up. But I think the you're, there's also a fight in what you're saying. So yeah, there's like a determination or a push through thing. Yeah, I think remember your focus. Lifting yourself back up. Yeah, remember your focus. Remember yes. what you're doing focus. it for. Yeah, that, yeah. It'll spur you on. If if it's not a solid good reason why you're doing it, then yeah, you won't get back up. But if it's a good, solid reason, you, you, it's amazing what the body can do and what the mind can get you to accomplish. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it is. I agree. Amazing. And, it, 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 you know, mind over matter. You, you can do it. You and I think what's interesting is that seems to happen the most when there's no choice. So, the, you know, the women I talk to who have some, you know, it might be a health thing, you know, caring for their kid with a health problem or, or caring for a parent with a health problem. There's no, nobody else to do it as you're just saying. So they yeah. just have to keep going. Um, yes. You know, that, and that's what, whenever you ask them, how are you, you know, how are you coping? They just say, I just have yeah. to, um, you know, there yeah, is just, no choice. Yeah. So it's amazing yeah. what can be done when there is no choice. I agree.
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have the luxury now of the children being 26 and 23 and being able to say, did I do the right thing? Mm. And they have both said, yes, you did the right thing. We, 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 and it was a we. You mentioned teamwork yeah. a little while ago. And I think that that became very important. Mm. Um, the kids and I, I would tell them we were the Donahue team. Yeah. We were team Donahue. And the three of us were in it together. Mm. And um, it has created a link between us that a lot of families don't have. Yeah. Um, and I'm very lucky to have that um but i having the luxury to be able to say to them was a huge thing did i do the right thing and for them to say yes you did because yeah. it was insanity down there and um it was oh. that second wife and remarried and if he the third wife is much more amicable <laughs> so i know that it had a lot to do with um his choice in um, in in spouse uh, that had created that terrible environment. For the kids. Their relationship with their father is very positive and good. Yeah, mm. and it would not be. I, I do not feel it would be yeah. if we had stayed there. Yeah. We would have had a lot more of. If they got older, they just would have refused to go to his place altogether. Yeah. Um, um, the uh, so, what would you say now that um, you've got through this? Right, you're over yep. this big issue, this big challenge. Yep. What What would you say is the toughest thing you have to do now to kind of maintain your uh, your ability to cope with life generally? Like, are there are there things you yep. now do to make sure you never go back into that that degree of internal chaos that you had during that time? Uh, I, I feel, and I could be totally wrong, but I think that that trauma of doing that, um, is, has affected my whole life as a result. Um, I had, I, I, uh, find it difficult to be in management positions now because of the pressure yeah. of, uh, because, being under that pressure for that period of time and having to cope has not um, doesn't sit well with me and I tend to drop back there um, mm. uh, and I don't want to end up a screaming mess in the corner <laughs> yeah. ever again so um, I have strategies and I know when I am under stress and so that nighttime routine mm -hmm. comes into play yeah definitely again i do things like yoga classes when i need to de-stress they're really good for me because they they get me to breathe mm -hmm. i have found because i am a creative person uh someone said to me one time you need to do something creative every day and i do mm -hmm. i knit mm -hmm. <laughs> i'd sit and crochet um and I like to just uh, watch something silly on TV, do a crossword, take my mind off the pressures around me and bring me back to reality. Yep. And so I have strategies in place to do that. And you make choices that keep you away from that high degree of stress. I do. I do. I, I, have, I could be in a management position, yeah. but I don't feel the need. Yeah to put myself under that stress anymore. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put myself under that stress. I, I don't need to do that. So, so maybe it also made you uh, rethink what's important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what, there's, there's been lots and lots of crises go on other than this one um, in my life. And, uh, I tend to say, you know, it, it, we, no one's coming home with a, um, a diagnosis of cancer. We're okay. 
Yeah, right. Uh, we can get through this, you know. Um, we, we got this. And, I, and I'm saying we because I mean the kids and I. Yeah. So when, when they, if, 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 you know, one of them is, is, trouble. is got, yeah, got trouble, uh, she's got MS. Yeah. So, um, you know, but, it, but it's not a diagnosis of cancer. Yeah. And we will stand up, dust ourselves off, and take it one day at a time. Yeah, right. And that's our philosophy. That's so, so it not only um, made you focus on what's important, but it also uh, gave you a skill set that you yeah. now draw on yeah. when okay. the next crisis happens. So instead of, you know, that shock and overwhelm you described yeah. when you first found out yeah. and yeah. That yeah. I couldn't function at the classroom because yeah. of it. You don't, don't go there. It doesn't okay. happen now. You kind of go, right, what, what next? Right. What, okay. yeah. That's yeah. a bummer. What are we going to do about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, I actually, I actually think that concept is probably... Uh, the one I think that is is what gets women to or people generally to be able to cope with adversity more successfully. It's their yeah. exposure to it. Yeah, so you, I, you, I, you, I do agree with that. I successful do agree outcome that. though. So you know, if you yeah. have a terrible outcome, that's not going to not going to help. Yeah. But you yeah. know, if you have an outcome where you go, I got through it, I made it through it, and and right. even better if I had a something yeah. good at the end of it. Yeah. Um. You know, but I was able to get through that. So the next one that happens, well, I know I got through the last one. So yeah. you know, you seem to be able to just get absolutely. better and better at it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that um, when I, I went up in an aeroplane to jump out of an aeroplane mm -hmm. for my birthday. And I know that when I was sitting in that aeroplane flying up and there was all these people around me shaking um, <laughs> and they're absolutely terrified. And I'm just, I was cool, calm and collected. And the guy was saying <laughs> to me, are you right? And I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm safe. I'm with you. I'm, I'm cool. Whatever you do, we're going to be fine. So the scariest part was actually jumping out of the plane because that was that first leap. Yeah, but after that was great, oh you know. God. So, you, um, and it's the same. Um, it's that same strategy. You yeah. are faced with. Well, this was not adversity. It was um, mm. a scary Chris. situation. Yeah. Um, but your coping mechanisms are superior. Yeah. There, you know, you you uh, you're going to be put in. You're going to think clearer. Mm. I'm. I am going to think clearly when put into a stress situation because it's common territory for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to panic. Um, people walk on stage and they're absolutely terrified. You can see them side stage, absolutely shaking all over. And um, I'm not. Can I, I have say, to though, get myself excited. <laughs> before that court case, you were one of them. I was. I was, as I said, I'd lost so much weight. I couldn't eat. I couldn't so, sleep. So we're saying here, right, yeah. just to kind of finish to wrap this all up, yeah. that you are better able to cope. Yes. Stronger. Yes. And, and perhaps even at some level um, a better person. Yeah, a better, a better version of me. I'm a better version of me. Mm. I know me. I know me better than I did before that court case because before that court case, I didn't know I could do the things that I did. Yeah, right. And now I know I can. Yeah. And so I was not, I, I am not today the person I was back then. No, I'm a better not, version of me today. Yeah. yeah, not in a bad way, in a good way. No, in a good way. A, strong, yeah. a stronger person, um, a more resilient a um, persistent patient uh, because I had to learn patience. <laughs> Nine months is a long time. Yeah, you want absolutely. it straight away and you, you can't have it yeah. fixed. Um, and I was, I amazed myself in the things I was able to do. I remember the emotion, um, silly things going into uh, going into the, taking my two into the hospital to see their newly born half brother. 
um, what I took me three times to get out of that car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to, you know, I did it. I got out of that car and I took the kids in and I, I did it. So and I just want to feed one thing back to you that I want you to keep in your mind, right? Whenever you doubt yourself is something you just said, I amazed myself <laughs> with what I can do. Yeah. Got to write that up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you for sharing all that information. That was My wonderful. My pleasure. Hi again. I just want to do a review of the interview, the final part of the interview with Sharon. So I, she identified a number of specific things that she did, the strategies she used to cope during that traumatic period. Uh, you know, if I said uh, at the end of the first half, she reached out for help when she needed it and she ended up taking any present medication. But she also used uh, some visualisation uh, strategies and some positive reinforcement, uh, constantly telling herself that she was doing okay. She used regular exercise and found a lot of opportunities in doing that as well. So she was looking for opportunities for people to help her. She you know, took help when it was offered. Uh, she inc focused on in increasing her sleep and, it, you know, worked with a good sleep routine to try and make that happen. She listened to herself and paid attention. So if, you know, her body was telling her it wasn't coping or her head was saying it's too much, I can't function, she responded to that as, it, as needed. And she used lots of distraction and listened to lots of music to help her relax and kept saying to herself one day at a time and I can do it. So there's a lot of really good strategies that everyone can apply to their own lives from that. The character strengths that she said she drew on and there's interesting information about character strengths and how you can build them in yourselves. Uh, but for now, I'll just identify what those character strengths she identified in herself were. That was resilience, she said, the ability to kind of get up and keep going. Her determination, uh, she said that there was so much that can be accomplished when you just have to, when there's no other option but you to make it happen. You, it's amazing what can be done. Uh, she also said that she kept remembering her focus and her why. The reason, the things that uh, outweighed all the problems was how important it was for her to get this right and to keep going. So that was that made it a lot easier to keep pushing through. She also said she used teamwork and she relied on other people a lot more than she would have normally. Uh, one other thing that I think, or one aspect that I think is really important to pull out of each of the interviews I do, is how going through this process has changed the person I'm interviewing. And uh, Sharon said that she now listens to herself. She makes decisions around her new reality. So, you know, she's more sensitive to high levels of stress. So she avoids those, those situations uh, where she knows it's possible to do so. It doesn't unnecessary situations of doing, putting herself into that level of stress. She said she's a stronger and a better person because of uh, the adversity that she went through. She's learned persistence and patience. And she also said that now she's really familiar with stress and adversity. And so she notices the signs in herself and can address them more easily. And then she also just said her resilience, her ability to, ability to bounce back has greatly improved. And not only for her, but for everyone who went through it with her, her children as well. They're all better at being able to respond to one another's stress levels. So she mentioned her daughter has been diagnosed with MS. And instead of falling apart about that, they've all kind of just, okay, we, we know how to handle stress. We'll just work together to make this happen. So I think they were really great insights for all of you in terms of what you can use and how you can apply these things to your own life. So I hope that was helpful and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for listening.